a lot of water, and, and I used to urinate like every two hours. Now it's like every 15 minutes to a half hour. Oh, you pissing yourself off. Um, is that good? Uh, I'm in the middle of the night. I'm getting up two, three times. Yeah, why don't you add water to your juices? Oh, okay. Water down your juices, and that will decrease this uh, urinary thing you got going on. Actually, you should add at least a cup or half a cup of water to any juice because it's too concentrated and it stresses your pancreas and will eventually lead to diabetes anyway. So you should water down your juices anyway. It's like if you eat an apple, you, your saliva dilutes the juice in the apple. But when you drink the juice, you bypass the chewing process, which dilutes the apple juice. So that's, therefore, you should add the water to the juice before you drink the juice. But I want you to do like half juice, half water. Because with the juice in the water, it slows down the urinary stuff. You're stressing the hell out of your, your, your kidney. And you're losing the ability to concentrate. And when the kidneys lose their ability to concentrate, you're going to have a metallic taste in your mouth, or the absence of a metallic taste in your life, the mouth. The kidneys recycle minerals. So when the kidney is failing, it cannot recycle minerals, and you end up with an iron deficiency anemia, which is the inability of the kidney to recycle minerals. But you, people don't associate it with the kidneys, so they take iron, and meanwhile, the kidney is deteriorating. So when you, when you have a, a taste of missing a mineral, it's coming from the kidney's inability to recycle. And that's done by concentrating things. The, pill, the kidneys do two things, concentrate and dilute. Concentrate is male, dilution is female. Every organ does a male and female. So what's happening is your kidney is being stressed, so you need some comfrey. You got to do some restoration for your kidney. Use some comfrey, some glucosamine and chondroitin to help rebuild this kidney. Because you don't want to do that to, you know, you becoming a pismolian. <laughs> yeah. Okay, prostate. I got to talk about prostate uh, disease. Just for a moment, because it's an epidemic amongst black men. Um, everything that damages the uterus damages the prostate, first of all. That much you must realize. A lot of the damage is caused by rubbers alone, actually, but I don't want to get there. because I know the brothers want to put their penis in a rubber coffin. So <laughs> what we're talking about is the prostate. Vinegar will dry it out. Salt and sugar pull moisture out of the prostate. The beginning of prostate problems is the failure to get the last drop, which causes the brother to wag the dog a whole lot. You know, they splash on his shoes and his pants and everything, just piss on. So what they do is put these little stalls between the men in the men's room to stop us from splashing on each other when actually it's the prostate deteriorating that's causing us to wag around like that, you know, like a windshield wiper. So that's the beginning of prostate deterioration, which occurs when the man is around 12 years old. It starts deteriorating. When you see a couple drops of urine in the boy's underwear, the prostate is already on its way deteriorating. So we have like uh, pain that may go down the leg or in the back or in the front. That's an indication of prostate problem, but we ignore that, you know what I mean? Because we macho, you know what I mean? So men ignore all the early symptoms of prostate problems because we're taught, you know, if you show an injury, our master may slave sell us right away. So we were taught in slavery not to show injuries. It's just we still act like a slave, you know what I mean? So what we're talking about is understanding that everything in nature has a cycle. Even trees don't screw each other all year round. They have a time when they're making apples and a time when they're not. Trees are not horny all year round. Sorry. The tide comes in, tide goes out. Everything has a cycle. You point to it, it's got to have a cycle if, if it's alive. So we are taught that the prostate doesn't have a cycle. We're taught to breed all the time have sex all the time so we can make babies all the time so the master can make money all the time. So we're still having sex like slaves. So we're into another equation altogether. Then we don't spiritualize the sex activity. We don't say a prayer and ask God to guide us and protect the child that may be conceived because we're trying to be, you know, worshipers of God. And we're performing a godly activity like eating. We say a prayer for that. We say a prayer when we eat them damn hamburgers from Burger King. So we should say a prayer before we have sex. Now you're into an African way of having sex because we're spiritualizing the activity. So I'm saying it's a spiritual thing too because we're not creating the right spirit to move in life. And the prostrate helps with our creation process. So it shows that we're not creating the right spirit we need to move in life also. 
the spiritual side of illness. Now, the prostate, as I mentioned, is harmed by vinegar, alcohol, sugar, salt, fried foods, and of course, masturbation. That's too much handy stuff there. So we're talking about healing the prostate. You can do that with a herb called saw palmetto and pygium. Those herbs work, saw palmetto, pygium. Another herb is called maca, M-A-C-A. And another herb is called muapuama, which is M-U-I-R-A. And the other, other name is puama, P-U-A-M-A. Moa puama. Another herb is maca, M-A-C-A. Another herb is pygium from Africa, P-Y-G-E-U-M. And saw palmetto from the palmetto tree, S-A-W-P-A-L-M-E-T-T-O. Saw palmetto. Those are the major herbs that heal this prostate issue here. But inability to hold your urine, Premature ejaculation is also a sign and symptom of prostate deterioration. So sometimes you have to shrink this prostate gland when it's gotten too big. Then you're looking at herbs like shepherd's purse to shrink it. Uh, witch hazel, not the stuff in the little bottle. I'm talking about witch hazel, the herb. We're looking at crane's bill, which is sometimes called wild alum root, which helps shrink the prostate to reduce that uh, hardness in there. So we're looking at shrinking it, we're looking at healing it with the maca, morpoama, pygium, saw palmetto, and we're looking at altering the diet to get rid of the vinegar, which dries the prostate, alcohol, which dries the prostate, sugar, which dries the prostate, vinegar, salt, which dries the prostate. So we're doing a lot of things that are contributing to the illness, along with not being spiritual with the act of sex, which deteriorates the sex act, along with the masturbation, which was taught to do with the left hand because that's the woman's hand, instead of the right hand, that's gay. So don't masturbate, it doesn't matter. What system you use? I didn't mean to go in that sidebar. Please forgive me. So, so we're talking about doing these things to, to save our prostate gland. But understand that rubbers can do this alone. The talcum powder in rubbers causes cancer. The gel causes cancer. The combination of the, the ingredients in the prophylactics cause cysts and tumors anyway, as said by the Food and Drug Administration, anyway. So we're looking at sticking our penis in a rubber coffin just so we can feel good. And it's not worth it, you know what I mean? So we don't have any control over ourselves. That's what us brothers say, because you sisters be looking so good that we can't control ourselves. Y'all be walking around with y'all big behinds. You know we ass freaks. So we're looking at these asses all day. Then we eat ass in the morning, call it bacon. So we're just assing around all day. So the problem is we think that every movement of a woman's body means sex. We're taught that stuff. You know what I mean? We're totally innocent, uh, I guess. So it's a lot of things that are adding to this. The way the ladies dress today, they dress like they want to be raped to men. I'm not lying to you. Tits hanging out. You know what I'm telling you the truth? and the, they got the rings in their navel, rings in their vagina, and the homosexuals got rings in their butt. <laughs> yeah, I gotta treat that ass, you know, because a lot of them come to me for treatment, and they're just people that have been misguided. It's nothing wrong, all of us have been misguided, but I'm the one who has to treat these people. And I, and I you know, like, I'm trying to repair a, a ring hole in a man's ass. It gets kind of like, you kind of like want to get little, ticked off here, you know what I mean? Say so like, oh, why you want to wear your ring in your ass? Because he said his lover liked it, you know? <laughs> so I'm trying to relate to people. <laughs> so that's what happens in the, in the treatment. Because when I was in psychiatry, uh, I had a, a man who thought he was an orange, and if, and if I didn't squeeze him once a day, he would go crazy. <laughs> Then I was treating a lady who thought she was a chair and I had to sit on her once a week. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to dealing with mentally ill people, so it's no problem. You can talk to me. I think you're normal. <laughs> so I'm saying keep that in mind when you're dealing with the prostate. The herbs are help, but the diet is also part of it, and being spiritual is also part of it. All of them work together. You can't treat this prostate by itself. And anything that harms the prostate harms the uterus, anything. So you're looking at the man's version of fibroid tumors is prostate disease. That's what I'm saying. So you have to go on the same diet as a lady going on prostate disease. Same diet. No difference. I, that was a, what you want me to talk about soon? Just a prostate? Doc, doc. Yeah. Got a question. My, my question is, you said that earlier that we are 
addicted to radiation. Right. Can you explain to us how do you personally um, avoid or try to protect yourself from the radiation that most of us sometimes do not guard ourselves against, such as cell phones, computers. Could you talk about that? And please also show us the item that you do wear or carry on your person. Yeah, they have diodes, D-I-O-D-E. And you can attach them to your cell phone, your beepers, and all that. And they also have polarizers, which neutralizes the radiation from cell phones, beepers, television, monitors, um, yeah, the concrete, uh, the gas pedal of your car, uh, all that kind of stuff that gives you radiation toxicity, which causes your body to create a magnet where it clings, radiation is attracted to it. Just by walking by to someone who's been in front of a computer, cause you to get radiation toxicity. So we have to have these diodes which you put on your person or put on the machine itself, and uh, polarizers which neutralize the radiation and toxicity. 1-800-867-1800-867-7777. Uh, they sell diodes, the one I showed you cost $7. But you can get little ones to put on your cell phone and beepers too, if you go on the internet, you know what I mean? But they sell the diodes and polarizers to neutralize the radiation which causes dryness, sitting in front of a computer dries you, it causes fatigue and mood swings. It's, it's a thing that computers cause. It's, most machines invented by white men are very harmful to women because they, they invent, it, invent it without the balance of the female principle. So most machines that are created by white men are very harmful to women. Women are the equation in whatever you're dealing with, especially a, a war. If you don't kill women, you don't win a war, especially a white war. The women work in factories. They create the clothes and the bullets. So when they bomb a factory, they are killing women and children. So how you win a war is destroy the supply line. Destroy the supply line means you bomb factories. Soldiers don't work in factories. Women do. Even in America, when they had a war going on, women worked in the airplane factory. Who do you hell you think they're killing when they bomb a factory? When white men fight, they kill women. That's how you win a battle. I'm just telling you how it is. You got this dreamy idea about war. If you want to learn about war mythology, the best thing to read is the Bible. <coughs> Load it with it. Oh, thank you. This, this is my ankh. Yeah. The white people call it a weapon. And they, you know, they don't let me on my plane with my ankh. So I had to put it in a suitcase, you know what I mean? Uh, this is an ancient symbol, which is where the first cross was derived from. Actually, this is the cycle of the sun, the solar cycle of the sun that your ancestors plotted. But it, it means a lot. It's, it's called the tree of life. It represents the growth and development of your spirituality, the ankh, the tree of life. It's a lot of words, like you say, tutank. You say, King Tut, his name is Tut Ankh Amen. Tut Ankh Amen, where you get Amen, which is the name of an ancient powerful god. And they found this power around the pyramids and they call it Amon. And anything that was powerful they call it Amon, Ammonia. All that's named after the god Amon. A lot of words you use are African words but they've been distorted by the Europeans over time and so you lose the African connection. But if they stole you, worth stopping them from stealing your words. I mean give me a break. So you give them a lot of credit for words they do not own. They have Europeanized African words, but they, their vocabulary is very limited. When they met us, they were just grunting a lot of things. They didn't have too much to say. Uh, bless their heart, because they had bad breath, rotten teeth anyway. It's kind of funky conversation, if you ask me. So in any case, uh, thanks for giving me along. So you want to protect yourself from the radiation. I carry this for my spiritual protection, you know, because our ancestors created, so I figure I'm carrying all my, my great-great-grandmother and all of their spirit with me when I have this. That's why I carry it around with me. I, I'm from the Sea Islands, and you know they call me a root doctor. I ain't going to shrink your damn feet. You don't have to be scared of me and all that, even though people on my island are scared of me. <laughs> I mean, you know, they careful what they say to me. Yeah. I don't do nothing. When they were doing the Daughter of the Dust, they used to call me up. I said, no, we don't bury people that way. You know, I would tell them how you do that stuff. You know, you took a piece of hair. You know, when you stop, want to stop your husband from sneaking out, what you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, 
I went into a sidebar. Y'all, y'all call y'all college and cultured up here in Philadelphia. Y'all need to know all that backwoods stuff. Yeah, okay. Now, there seems to be a, um, <clears throat> a document uh, of rise in lupus in the black community, especially among black women. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could you um, elaborate on causes and solutions? Well, lupus is basically arthritis that hasn't been treated to tell you the truth. What happens is you eat the sugar, you eat the salt, you eat the bleach white flour, pulls the moisture out of the nerves, the nerves get damaged, can't transmit the signals properly, so you, it, you get early warmings, like back here, this is a problem with your liver, but it's also a potassium deficiency. So we're not reading these pains and aches related to the minerals, like we, he was talking about the right side of his head, and I was saying liver. Like if you have a pain here, it's low blood sugar. Here is high blood sugar. Pain on the side is migraine, headaches. Back here is potassium deficiency. Each back here is magnesium deficiency. So each part of the body is related to a mineral and all that. But we're not reading that stuff because they took away your rights of passage. See, when you were 12 years old, before the slave thing, you were taught all of this stuff. All this stuff you call Dr. Africa is what you knew when you were 12 years old. A PhD is equivalent to a 12-year-old's education in Africa. That's, that's how far behind you, we are when they took away our culture and took away our language and took away all that stuff. So I'm just trying to say, you know, uh, just be kind because we got a lot to overcome here. My biggest struggle is with people that don't understand how to eat. Because when you don't know how to eat, a knife and fork is a dangerous thing. It's dangerous. Because you're eating out of ignorance and out of emotionality. And that's dangerous. So uh, I don't really focus on the diseases too much. It's just the cause is your damn mouth. So we're dealing with lupus. So we got to repair the nerve damage that's been done. So we're going to use lipoic acid, which repairs nerve damage, and glutamine, which repairs nerve damage in brain cells. We use it a lot with alcoholics who've got senile dementia. So we use glutamine, lipoic acid, glucosamine, and chondroitin and an arthritis herbal remedy. They already have them put together, and it says arthritis, so you get that for the lupus. But understand that what's happening outside of your body happens inside of your body. It's not foreign. So if you were to sprain your, like your ankle, your ankle would get stiff. We call it nature's cast, because it stiffens the muscle so the nutrients can get to it. You follow me? So when something is damaged inside your body, it gets stiff. It, the body locks it up so that I'm going to get nutrients to it. You can't use it. I'm repairing it. So it does the same thing to the veins and arteries and nervous system. It's the same system of healing. No matter what you call the disease, cancer, lupus, the body's going to use the same system. I must immobilize it so I can heal a thing. Because as long as you're using it, I can't heal it. So it makes it stiff. It makes the arteries stiff, nerves stiff, because it's trying to repair it. It's not a foreign process here. The one thing you understand is your body. If you don't understand nothing else, you understand your body. Don't get fooled by all this language we use in medicine, a lupus, and this and that, and that and this. The body don't know anything about these names. <laughs> the body only says, I'm just trying to be healthy, and if it takes me locking your body up to do it, I'm going to lock it down, make it stiff so I can get it healed. That's all the body's ever going to do. So what we're trying to do is give back the moisture to the tissue, the flexibility to the tissue. So the body says, I'm not getting the nutrients because you're still eating the fried food, the bleach white flour, so what I'm going to do is heat it up to make it soft again so I can get the nutrients in. The same thing you do when you cook meat, it gets soft. So the body says, I'm going to heat it up, make it soft so I can get the nutrients in. And you're still eating the same stuff, the white sugar, bleach white flour, eating late at night, farting all the time, you know, all this stuff, do all this stuff. So the body says, what the hell can I do? So the body says, I'll bring water in. So the water comes with the heat. And if you soak paper in water, it'll t fall apart. So the water is making the, the vein, the artery, and all the stuff soft so the nutrients can get in. So the body uses inflammation and edema to get the tissue, the nourishment. But you've been taught that everything the body's done is wrong. Because the Europeans teach you everything the body does is wrong. That's their belief because they don't trust nature, they don't trust God, because nature betrayed them. They call it the Ice Age. So ever since then, they said nature is an evil force that must be tamed, you see. So they've always been at war with nature. And anybody close to nature, they're at war with. And you are closer to nature than they are. Did you enjoy Dr. Africa? Yes. yes.